everyone. Welcome back to Kitchen Table TCG. Uh, up with another Arcane Rising market update. Uh, we will be going through both First Edition and uh, Unlimited. We're actually going to start out with Unlimited. Uh, but before we get there, just a quick thanks to all the patrons that make this stuff possible. Uh, and, you know, patrons, you get all this data uh, messaged to you. Uh, and then you also get a collection tracker that you can just copy and paste the data. Once you've kind of built your collection, uh, you can just copy and paste the data and kind of track the value of your collection according to my numbers that I get from various sources. One of those sources is Midtown Merchant. Thanks to Mitch over at Midtown Merchant. Uh, he's given the channel a, a one-time use uh, promo code called Just Love 10 Remember to be kind to the people around you and just love them. Uh, so thank you to Mitch over there for that promo code. Uh, other sources, we have eBay, we have TCG Player. Uh, we're also using um, the Fendel Times, which is a great, uh, you can go to fendeltimes.org. And, uh, and Dim Guy over on Discord has been putting together this great kind of market update uh, regularly that I, I use as well. So uh, lots of sources here. Let's get into it. We're actually going to talk about uh, Unlimited First now. Uh, just because it seems like it's more player based and um, it's just more interesting too. There's more data, which makes it a little bit more accurate, I think. Um, and so we're going to start starting with with unlimited from here on out. So uh, here we go. First off, uh, sealed boxes are. <laughs> this is ridiculous. That uh, sealed boxes are selling for $150 on eBay. Which let me tell you this. First off, do not buy $150 boxes of sealed Arcane Rising Unlimited or Welcome to Wrath. Um, unlimited you know it, i'm only i didn't even want to put it in here but i'm only putting it in here because i just want to present the facts um and i want you to see that over time we're going to see this kind of going up and down and up and down and up and down but it's man i think this is not uh not going to happen i've i've heard from multiple sources that there's tons more product hitting the market this week next week the first of uh first of the year so uh, be patient do not buy 150 dollars boxes please we will see this kind of 80 dollar 90 dollar 100 dollar box price um for quite a while once it dips back down so expect that so i'm only leaving this for the market data so that you can see that in the future uh we do have some great movement on uh on the heart though sorry on the eye of ophidia uh, it, we had multiple sold listings at around 600. I don't know what happened to my chart. It disappeared, but we'll get back there for the next one. Um, so that's a 14% growth on the eye. Uh, as for the legendaries, um, we actually had some some decrease, which I think is actually pretty good. I think that's a good thing uh, that, that the legendaries are, are not skyrocketing. People are cracking boxes, putting them out there, um, and, and we have plenty on the marketplace uh, plenty of sold listings, plenty of stuff going on. Um, you know, the skull cap and the, the foundry heart still tend to be the highest valued, but there are no major issues with any of these prices. This is great. You can, you can crack four boxes open and have a great shot of hitting an average, uh, of $160 card. So that is awesome. Um, and I think we'll, we'll kind of generally see these prices, I think kind of dip over time as more boxes are opened and, you know, as more players come in, they'll kind of rebound. And I think we'll kind of see this. I don't think we'll ever get much below the 135. I don't think we'll ever get much above the 180. Um, just as more players enter the market and as more product enters the market as a result of that. So, uh, let's move over to Majestic Rainbow Foils. Um, this has, uh, we had a 9% re increase, which again, I think is pretty healthy. I think as long as we're not seeing huge spikes and huge dips, we are uh, in a healthy market. Um, nothing too major. You can still pick up a Command and Conquer at, you know, 100, 120 bucks. There's a, there's a pretty good increase there. Uh, it's a well-played card. Art of War hasn't moved as, as equally as that, so that might be a, a short-term pickup if you're looking to pick up some of those on the market. Um, other than that, I don't see anything that is huge. Arc Knight Ascendancy is well played. Um, those, those cards that are played are going to kind of continue to rise as players pick up decks and see deck lists. Um, but generally, uh, just a 9% growth is, is pretty healthy on those. And that kind of... Um, matches here with the non-foil as well so it's good that that data kind of lines up you know one of the things i do want to say is with this happening right with the sealed boxes we have some, seen some people listing command and conquer art of war these high high value cards even at the rainbow foil for 200 250 dollars again same thing uh right now until we see more market data 
I would not purchase those at those prices. Just because something is listed uh, doesn't mean that it's sold. Um, and especially on these um, on these buy it now offers, uh, make sure you check out my last video on Crucible of War where I showed you how to get this kind of tax elusive price. For instance, this was a, uh, we'll, we'll talk about, um, this was a Command and Conquer uh, from Fresh and Blood Arcane Rising Unlimited foil that the buy it now price said that it sold for 175 but if you dig into the source code at uh if you look up on watch count you can see how to do it you dig up the source code code the tax exclusive price was 120 dollars. so uh it sold for 120 bucks um for the uh for the rainbow foil of that uh, so make sure you're you're being paying attention to that not just accepting whatever it says that the best offer price was when it has that little x through it uh, super rares, rainbow foil, again, same kind of growth in the, in the two to, you know, in the 2% here, uh, really healthy market, uh, right now for arcane rising cards, uh, same with the regular super rares, um, nothing too spiky. Everything seems to be pretty fluctual, uh, lots of cards coming, going on the marketplace, uh, and even the the rares are moving too. And, and I've seen so many sold listings, which is really healthy to see people. I, I saw a post today about people picking up and, and selling cards on TCG player and, uh, just that, that these cards are moving and even, you know, you can move some, some of the rares even, um, uh, are, are moving up, you know, the average price was like 60 cents and now they're moving up to 75 cents. That's just because more people are purchasing cards. So, uh, it, it is a great healthy market, I think. So as we move over to the EV, uh, you know, you can see that. Uh, and as we move over to the EV, you'll see, um, that the, the, the price is moving up exactly the same as all that numbers moves the same, just a three or 4% increase. You know, this kind of box EV don't, don't see this number and think, Hey, yeah, that makes sense. You can buy a $150 box. Uh, this EV right here assumes that you're opening 40 boxes. You get your chance at the eye. Uh, you, you also are opening, you know, uh, this includes your one and quarter chance at getting a legendary. Um, and this also includes selling the rares and the foil rares at the full value of the cards where you probably won't be able to do that. You'll, you'll, it'll take you forever to get this box EV back. Uh, more realistically would be, uh, if you're opening one box of this, your, your expected value would be about 85 bucks. You know, you can't really include the chance at the legendary. You can't really include the chance at the heart. Um, and you know, you're not going to be able to sell all those rares for $31. Uh, I, I did include the foil rare price because there are so many sold listings of the foil rares. Um, so, you know, that's kind of what I am saying. If I were opening a box, the value that I would expect to get back out of it. And then if you hit the legendary, you kind of have a, a bonus action of 40 bucks. So, you know, over time we have just a slight 3% increase here. Um, so overall, I think the market's super healthy for Arcane Rising Unlimited, especially for uh, not having a ton of product uh, in the sealed department on the market right now. I'm glad that these uh, kind of single prices haven't reflected what people are trying to get out of the boxes at 150. Do not pay tons more money than these prices. I'm telling you, these are the sold listings from various sources. So um, I, I would hold off and wait. Uh, again, I, I'm just giving you the data and, and what... Uh, Legend Story Studios has presented to us what we believe that we will have Arcane Rising Unlimited more product coming in hand and uh, you know a healthy supply of that for a while. Could be wrong. Again, this is just trying to present you the facts. So, all right, let's move over to um to the uh to the first edition boxes. Um, we've had tons of movement on the first edition boxes. We have sold listings at uh at kind of fourteen hundred. And that's just going up as the day goes on. Honestly, you know, we already have kind of a $1,500 box sold. Um, you know, this price right here, we could look that up uh, and, and we'll, we'll see if you're, if you're interested, go ahead and head to, to watchcount.com and look how that is. Uh, that just happened in the last five minutes or so, honestly. So uh, we, we're seeing sold listings happening in this going up. And again, I think sealed boxes are just going to continue to climb. Uh, and the eye is also climbing. So we, we kind of had a sold listing this week uh, at seven grand um, and people are, are starting to get in on that. Uh, and that is a um, a 40% increase over last week. 
Um, you know, we had one one huge purchase uh, purchase on Facebook for literally all of the arcane uh, rising cold foil legendaries, um, and this is what the prices were set at. And I had another source for all these um, that were just a little bit less than these prices as well. Uh, these were private Facebook sales, uh, so make sure that you do your your own research as well. Um, there are some of these cards individually listed at these prices without a buyer right now, um, in the marketplace. So just be aware. Um, but this is really where I believe the cards are trajecting anyway. Uh, but you know, I do think that, um, this is a, a pretty, pretty big increase in, in one week. Uh, but again, you know, flesh and blood stuff is moving crazy right now. So it really isn't, it's not that far out of left field to, to believe in these values. Um, and I think this is what we're seeing. So uh, just make sure you're doing your own research. Make sure you're looking up cards and sold prices everywhere you can try to find. Look in the Discord. Look at the Thendale Times. Um, make sure you're doing your homework. Uh, you know, and that compares to these cold foils. This is kind of why I'm saying this. You know, there are four on eBay right now as um, as auctions. I believe most of them are auctions. At least two of them were auctions. Uh, you know, this week we had almost no listings in public marketplaces. So really next week to see what, I think these end in like three or four days. To, so to see where these four cards end up next week will be really interesting um, because they are in a public marketplace. Uh, but on Facebook, I'm seeing plenty of offers um, around this $100 range with some outliers at $150. Um, and this kind of lines up with the Discord too. It's interesting to not see these growing as much as the other cold foils um that to me tells me that this is also play driven and you know if it was just collector driven uh these prices i think would would probably see a a, a similar increase over time and, and we'll see as the weeks go on but um anyway those are the prices kind of nothing major kind of same as last week um and moving to majestic rainbow foils this is where things get really really difficult um you know, on most of these, the, the current lowest offered price in the public marketplace on TCG Player and eBay is this weird $800 number that people keep putting out. And that's extremely high based on what has sold in the last week. And But the problem is that there's no other cards on the marketplace. So these are people who are putting the card up there for very high and, and kind of seeing what they're feeling out the market in private offer. So don't just see this command and conquer, which we have seen sold for 700 bucks and, you know, see a, a, a tech low core on, on the marketplace for 800 bucks and just accept that as the, the pro price for a majestic rainbow foil. You know, these cards all have individual value um, and, and people are feeling out the market still. So, you know, I've heard an estimate of around 500 print run on all these. I don't know how 100% accurate that is. People seem to be accepting that as accurate. Um, so it, it's going to be really difficult to get um, consistent sold listings on any of these cards on a regular basis. Um, that being said, I, I'm pretty confident in the $700 on Command & Conquer. Uh, I talked to two or three people who are trying to buy them, actually, who have kind of advertising that they're trying to buy. Uh, and kind of found that uh, there's a print issue on some of them, the back of the card. And so that's kind of affecting the condition of some of them. And, and they're willing to pay much higher, not much higher, they're willing to pay in the eight to $900 range for like a pristine mint one uh, without that issue. So I think this price is, is kind of locked in right now. Um, but we've seen a 77% increase. And, and a lot of that is due to Command & Conquer just gaining a lot of value this week and a lot of people realizing how rare uh, these rainbow foil majestics are uh, you know that uh, compared to the regular majestics um, you know they were just you know more sold on the market this week there's you know a uh, eBay listing right now for three of these command and conquers um, kind of in one listing and th there was more sold on the market this week than last and so people um, you know maybe people just lowered the prices and um, there are still very few available kind of this week. So I think this is a, a purchase of people who are uh, just thinking, hey, uh, it's time to get in. And so we're seeing the market dry up. There were a lot of sold listings last week on these cards. So uh, we did see the market move down on it um, this past week. But now that there are fewer listings, I would expect this to kind of even out 
uh, and it doesn't line up with the rainbow foils because again I think this this print run number uh, excites the collectors and the investors so moving on to the super rares you know I think that the um, the market's a little bit interesting here I don't think that the I think people are kind of sleeping on the rainbow foils compared to the rainbow foil majestics where people are seeing this 500 print run and diving in uh, we haven't seen hardly any movement in prices and any movement in the, the offerings on the marketplaces like TCG Player. Um, whereas the non-rare, we have seen more sold listings. So uh, it's it's interesting to see that kind of difference here. Um, but it, it's, you know, it's kind of just how the market works. Uh, people are more okay with buying a $8, $9 card than, or they have more money than picking up a $30 card. So, um the players are okay with purchasing them and you know it just kind of is what it is so not a ton to report on on the rainbow foil rares you know i think people um the the market didn't really sell last week so people lowered their prices and that's why we're seeing a little bit of a, a retracement uh on those i i don't think it's anything to worry about especially that the rare prices have kind of stayed almost exactly the same um you know, honestly, there's not a ton of purchases of the first edition uh, because I think uh, that the the availability of the unlimited cards is keeping the players there. I think where the again the the investors are kind of focused on these majestics, uh, the players aren't picking up the the rares because if you can get a a rare for sixty cents uh, from the unlimited set, they're just not thinking through that. Uh, they're not willing to pay this three bucks, and th these are more. More than these are sold listings, these are the lowest listed price right now. Um, so these are not necessarily selling at that value, um, which is which is interesting. I, I think we'll start seeing this move eventually, but right now the market hasn't accepted them. And particularly the rainbow foils, they've actually lowered their prices, uh, or some have sold at you know prices lower than they had listed. Uh, and so we've seen a retracement there. I did go ahead and add in the commons because there seems to be a significant um, value based on what I'm seeing on the Facebook marketplace of people purchasing kind of full, you know, collections of the set. Um, so these are just actually the listed pricings. Many of these uh, kind of I look through and they have zero prices sold. Uh, but I just wanted to start tracking this. I'm not going to actually include this in the I'll, I'll show you when we get to the EV, but um I just wanted to start tracking this over time so we can see where the market is heading for that. And, you know, the same actually is opposite uh, with the commons. We actually do have sold listings in a lot of the commons. So people are kind of finishing up, you know, play sets or whatever. They're okay with purchasing a first edition at 50 cents. Um, there are a lot of sold listings. And some of these are, you know, more of around a dollar, kind of put an, an average around 50 cents to 80 cents per card. Um, so that gets us to our EV. And I'm going to tell you what we're going to do. I'm going to give you a box EV, which is just the raw numbers, um, you know, again, assuming this kind of 40 boxes, but also assuming you're able to sell all the commons and, you know, blah, blah, blah. But then I'm going to give you the box EV without those commons included. Um, and I did uh, take out the foil commons as well, just because we haven't had enough sold. And then I'll give you that same thing uh, without the, the chance at the legendary or the eye. Um, so that's what we're going to do. So let's see. Uh, where those prices ended up for the box EV. So including all the cards, kind of the raw data, including these commons, you're at about 1,300. If you take out those commons, uh, you're at about 1,000. Um, and with the the legendary or the the fabled, sorry, without the legendary or the fabled, you're you're pricing in around 352 bucks. So uh, really, with the market, the way that the market moved this week and the the huge data in this legendary these sold legendary cards um it, it is getting this number is going to continue to get further and further away from each other if you don't hit the l uh, or the f it's going to be um it's going to be really harsh on you so just keep that in mind if you're planning on opening a, a first edition box uh looking at the ev chart I, I i went ahead and i have not included the the commons yet because i just don't feel like we've seen enough sold listings um at those values uh, so I'm not going to include those yet. Once we start seeing sold listings, I'll start including them kind of as, uh, as an estimate. Uh, but we sit, did see a, a very, you know, 20% increase here, um, over time in this expected value. So anyway, that was the arcane arising market update for the week. Uh, we'll see you right back again tomorrow for welcome to wrath. 
Uh, again, thank you so much to uh, the patrons who make this possible. If you're looking for a collection tracker, I think it's a, it's a good way. And patrons, you've already got that info. Uh, I hope that you have a good day. Make sure that you're kind to the people around you. Make sure you're loving them. Uh, I know it's crazy right now. Have a good one.